It took every fiber of my being to not spike this cake. Nice. That's what these are for. So I'm here at my friend Mirza's house and she's a phenomenal cake artist and she does a bunch of stuff which you can see on screen right here. She does things like macarons and custom cakes and, and everything in between and uh, she's gonna help me make a volleyball cake. So that's what we're gonna do today. Where's the volleyball? Thank you to Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Ridge Wallet is one of the best wallets out there made of premium metals like this beautiful burnt titanium. You're probably still carrying around your Marvel's Avengers wallet filled with who knows what. How did Rindo get back into this wallet? You can't even take her out of this thing. It's like a bottomless pit of nothing. Why do you have a shopping list from four videos ago? Costco business membership? We have that executive now. There is no way that this fat Hulk-sized wallet made of plastic and pleather is going to protect America's Not only will your titanium ridge wallet protect America's it also holds up to 12 cards with cash and doesn't get in the way of spandex. Get yours today at ridgewallet.com slash chef PK and get 10% off when you order. First thing we need to do is actually make our buttermilk since we didn't buy any. You're gonna need one tablespoon worth of white distilled vinegar and one cup worth of whole milk. Now into a large bowl, go ahead and add in 35 grams worth of cornstarch. This is gonna be the start of your dry ingredients. Next, we're gonna do 270 grams worth of all-purpose flour and about eight grams worth of baking powder. The last thing is just a pinch of salt, about four grams. Go ahead and give this a good spooning just to make sure all of those ingredients are incorporated. Now into your actual mixing bowl, go ahead and drop in about 113 grams worth of softened butter, followed by 250 grams worth of granulated sugar. Now for your eggs, we're gonna crack three whole eggs into your measuring cup with two egg yolks. Go ahead and separate the egg yolks and the egg whites and save the egg whites to drink it like Rocky or something, I don't know. To your eggs, go ahead and add in one tablespoon worth of vanilla extract, and then you're also gonna need one quarter cup worth of vegetable oil. Now we're gonna go ahead and cream the sugar and the softened butter together with our mixer. Go ahead and use the paddle attachment for this and start it off super slow and low so that way nothing flies all over the place. After about a minute or two of that low speed, go ahead and give the bowl a good scrape just to make sure everything comes back up. Now go ahead and bring this up to about a six to eight speed, pretty much like a medium high and let this cream and then have Mirza just step in with the torch because she felt like the butter wasn't soft enough. What is happening? Now once you've softened up that butter and that sugar, this is when we're going to slowly start drizzling in that oil. You wanna do this super slowly so it doesn't splash everywhere and I hope you you can see this, there's kind of a stream of oil happening right now. After another two or three minutes of mixing, go ahead and scrape the bowl down once again just to make sure there's nothing stuck at the bottom. Now we're gonna slowly start adding in our eggs one at a time. You wanna make sure that the eggs are added and fully incorporated before, what is with this egg white? Fully incorporated before you add in the next egg. Continue to do this until all of your eggs are added and incorporated into that batter and no more of the yolk is actually showing. Now we're gonna start adding in our dry ingredients, alternating the dry ingredients with that buttermilk we had made. You wanna do this in three to four batches just so that way everything incorporates really evenly. Once you have all of your dried goods and your buttermilk into your mixer, let that mix for another minute or two and then scrape it down again because that's happening a lot. Now your last mix should only be about 30 seconds after adding in the remainder of your flour and then you actually wanna fold the rest of this together just so you don't overwork that batter. I don't know what this is, but apparently it's a substitution for what? For butter and shortening and it basically makes your cake slide out. It's a out. cake release. It's a cake release. That looks like, that looks like some kind from... of a release. You know what I'm saying? That's what that looks like. <laughs> So full credit of this concoction of lard, shortening, oil, and sugar goes to the Sugar Geek Show, link down below if you wanna check her out on Instagram. She makes awesome stuff. After lubing up your Nord armor, go ahead and make sure that you have enough on there to where it's not dripping, but just enough to where everything's fully covered. Now take the rings that are gonna be the base stations for your Nord boob armor and place them directly on your sheet tray with the boob armor right on top of that. Now try to separate your batter as evenly as possible. This should be enough for both of these pieces of boob armor. Just make sure that that they are, again, as even as possible. Now take your cakes and place them into a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, give it the toothpick test. We noticed that one of them was cooked fine, but the other one wasn't quite cooked enough. So we ended up removing the cake that was cooked and let it cool in the mold for about 10 minutes before flipping it over onto a cooling rack and making sure you gotta slap it. You gotta slap it, Mirza. There you go, do it again. Do it again, slap it. There you go, there you go. It'll loosen up the cake just a little bit. And that way you have this really beautiful little boob cake. Now, once the other cake is done, go to do the same thing, give it a little slap on the side. And there you have it, two beautiful half sphere cakes. Because we were on a time crunch, we tried to chill these in the freezer for about 20 or 30 minutes before we decided to work with them. Now we're gonna make some Cheaters Swiss buttercream. For this, you're gonna need 170 grams worth of pasteurized egg whites, 
followed by 680 grams of powdered sugar. Place this into your mixing bowl and go ahead and start bringing this together. You want to start off slow so you don't get powdered sugar everywhere and then increase that speed to a high speed before adding in a half teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon worth of vanilla extract. Give this a good scrape and get 680 grams worth of softened unsalted butter ready. With your mixer going over a medium speed, slowly start adding in all of your dabs of butter. Mirza showed me this really interesting way of doing it where you kind of cut them with your spatula and then hit them on the side and it's just, I don't know, it's fun. Now you're gonna whip this at a medium high speed for about eight to 10 minutes until it gets nice and fluffy. Once it's nice and fluffy, go ahead and scrape down all the sides and you can see how fluffy this buttercream is, but it is not its final form. Put this back on your mixer with the paddle attachment and now we're gonna mix this on a low speed for about 20 to 25 minutes to actually remove all of the air that we incorporated. This is gonna give you this really velvety, delicious, creamy buttercream that actually isn't too sweet and it's so good, it's amazing. Now that we have the buttercream and the cakes ready, we have to move on to actually assembling the cake. So for this, I go ahead and trim off just a little bit of the cake and eat the leftovers, just enough to where it'll sit evenly on top of each other. We also trimmed off just a bit of the bottom portion of one of the cakes, so that way it'll sit nice and flat on your cake stand. Now fill up your piping bag with whatever piping tip you want with your buttercream and do this really beautiful Naruto style design on the cake. I mean, Mirza kind of went ham on this. It looks really pretty, but we're just gonna take the next piece and cover it. Add a little bit of your buttercream to the bottom as glue, then take your top piece of cake and add it directly on top of that buttercream. Now you basically have a pokeball and you're done. Now take two very long skewers and place them directly into the cake and mark off where you're gonna be cutting those skewers. This is gonna actually help stabilize the cake. So take your now cut skewers and place them back into the holes you had originally made and take that other skewer and just kind of gently press down until you feel it go into the cardboard. And here's me being a child. Whee! Whee! Now take a fully filled bag of buttercream and start piping on that buttercream, starting from the bottom, gently spinning the cake until you have all of that cake covered with buttercream and finish it off with a little poop top. Now with an offset spatula, go ahead and start spreading that buttercream around just a little bit to start filling in any gaps you may have had while you were piping it. This is gonna be the initial smoothing phase and we're gonna move on to a second smoothing phase after this one. Once you have your cake looking like this, grab yourself a piece of acetate and we're gonna start smoothing over this ball even further. You can also use a really flexible small cutting board that may not work as well, but uh, this acetate is really effective for this. The thing with this kind of a cake is since we're using fondant, the smoother the actual buttercream is, the smoother the fondant is going to look later. So spend some time trying to smooth this out, but don't, don't take all day. After smoothing it out, pop it in the fridge to relax while we deal with the Play-Doh. It's totally clay. I'm convinced that fondant is literally edible Play-Doh, but also Play-Doh is edible, so maybe Play-Doh is fondant without the sugar? We need to color our fondant to get those really pretty yellows and blues. Take a little bit of yellow food coloring and add it to your fondant. We kind of eyeballed how much fondant we may need, which uh, is, we're gonna regret later, I promise. As you work this with your hand, you'll start to see some of that yellow come through, and we added a little bit here and there to try to get the right color that we wanted with this fondant. After you're done with the yellow, grab more fondant, and now we're gonna add in a little bit of blue food coloring to our fondant to get it to that really beautiful electric looking blue. After working with this first piece for about three or four minutes and it was all incorporated, we added in just a little bit more blue, further worked it in to try to get it darker, and then we actually added in just a little bit of black as well to further darken that blue color. After adding in that black and a little bit more blue, we were really happy with how this came out. Now for the really interesting part of this, we had to try to make a stencil to follow the volleyball stencil that we had. And to do that, we used a piece of plastic to drape over our actual cake, then marked it to kind of follow those lines, pop that cake back in the fridge. You don't want this sitting out too long. And then with this plastic piece, you actually have to cut out each piece of your stencil. We ended up only using one of the stencils we made and to reinforce it, we covered it with a little bit of tape. So that way is a little bit easier to work with. Gently peel this back and you're gonna end up cutting all of that excess tape on that stencil. This is something I learned from making cosplay and it really does work out if you're trying to make stencils to fit your original piece. Now that we have our stencil ready, we're gonna go ahead and roll out one of the colors first. We decided to cover the entire cake with the blue fondant to be our base layer. We rolled out the fondant to about a quarter of an inch of thickness because any thinner than that and you'll actually show too much of the buttercream underneath and you have a chance of cracking the fondant. So once you have your fondant rolled out, 
grab your buttercream cake and lay the fondant over your cake very gently and realize we didn't make enough blue fondant to completely cover the cake. So grab more of that fondant, go ahead and add in more blue food coloring to this and bring this all together. Roll this back out into that nice quarter inch thickness and drape this over the cake. It's always better to have a little bit of excess fondant to work with simply because you are going to cut some of that excess off. Now you wanna work quickly, but also gently when you're working with this fondant because it is time and temperature sensitive. As you gently start pressing your fondant in, use an X-Acto knife or a very sharp knife to cut off any excess while also tucking in the fondant underneath the actual sphere. After a little bit of time and effort, we have a beautiful blueberry. Now we went ahead and rolled out the yellow fondant. The yellow fondant is actually gonna be what we use the stencil for. So after rolling it out to the, about that quarter inch of thickness, go ahead and grab your stencil and cut out your first yellow piece of fondant. Remember to hang on to that stencil because we need to cut out a few more after this. Take a brush and brush a little bit of water onto the bottom side of your fondant and lay this directly onto your cake. We decided to start off with the bottom just to kind of hide any mistakes. And we use a spatula to kind of tuck in that yellow piece of fondant right into the blue. We continued this with another few pieces of our yellow fondant and the second one was draped immediately over the top. We had to do a little bit of cutting to kind of match up the yellow fondant, but I think it came out okay. The final piece was placed on the opposite side of that first yellow piece of fondant to try to bring everything together. We filled in a little bit of the negative space towards the bottom of the ball with more yellow fondant so it wasn't just a huge swatch of blue. Using your fingers, press in those edges gently, gently into the blue fondant to try to smooth them out. After we had our beautiful volleyball, I decided to ruin it by writing Haikyuu on it because I wanted, you know, it's, it's a Haikyuu volleyball. You gotta be excited for these things. Look at this, it's so awesome. It's a Haikyuu volleyball cake. And a little bit of blue glitter makes everything better. So, you know, we glitterized it. Well guys, there it is. We literally spent, when did it time to get here? Like 10, 9.30 in the morning? It is 10. now uh, 5.15 and we are done with our Haikyuu volleyball cake. And um, I didn't do most of the work. Mirza did most of the work. So if you want to follow her, do me a favor, check out the links below where you can find her on Instagram. And Mitsuyer's Kitchen. Uh, Mitsuyer's Kitchen. And you don't have any other Twitters or anything? You want to let no. people know? Okay, just, in, just, <laughs> just the gram. Uh, but you can find all that stuff down below. And to be honest, I'm pretty excited to finally eat this because we've been this has been going on all day. Yeah. And it's heavy. This, I don't think we should spike this. I, I still really want to take this outside <laughs> and just hit it for all the trouble it's caused, but we're pretty happy with it. So let's... Uh, Let's it's the some... first ball cake too, so it's, it's the very like, first ball cake we for either have, either of us have made, so it's okay. But uh, we can we can do better next time. Yeah, it's okay. We get cake, but the glitter made it better. <laughs> I don't even know oh, what the... oh, I where. Where are the I sticks? Hit... Did you I hit a stick? I think I hit. Yeah, I hit the stick. How? There's only two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be so. Cool. I'm so. I'm actually really excited to see the inside of this. Okay, wait. I need a plate, dude. That's rad. You I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I get the stick? And the other side, oh, the yeah. Other side. Oh no! <laughs> there. <laughs> but look at the inside of that. It's pretty. Look at it. It looks cool. So there, there's our little uh, slice of cake, and it looks really cool down at the. You guys, you guys can see the ball right now. But uh, the one thing with that mold is, like Mirza said, is it it kind of cooks a little unevenly. Very. But um, I'm just gonna go for some cake. You're gonna eat the fondant? Uh huh. Okay. Mm. It's good cake though. That's really good cake. The fondant tastes like Play-Doh. And it's not box cake. I don't have to. That's really good. Well guys, there it is. To celebrate the release of Haikyuu this week, I'm really excited for it. It's probably one of my favorite anime of all time and uh, I'm glad we can make this cake to celebrate. My name is Chef PK. This is Mirza. Get subscribed. Remember, keep playing with your food. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that. Everybody would be sad. So sad. So sad. So sad. Cake pops.